Well, teams of international scientists are looking to put the first privately funded robotic vehicle on the moon. One of the groups in the running is PT Scientists, and they're testing their rover in the deserts of Qatar as part of their bid to clinch the $20 million Google Lunar X Prize. Now, to win, it has to make it to the lunar surface, drive 500 meters, and then it has to send pictures back to Earth. Well, Robert Bohm is the CEO of uh, PT Scientists. He's joining us here in our Doha studio along uh, with the rover. If you can just <laughs> explain to us how it works, how it operates, and just tell us a little bit about it. Okay, yeah, hello. So um, that's our rover that we brought with us. That's the Audi Luna Quattro, as we call him. He still needs a nickname. And that's the fourth generation of a rover that we've developed. And you know how it works? It has four wheels and it can turn 360 degrees on the spot right and what we did is you know we went to the desert and tested it here and wanted to understand you know how it can cope with the heat and environment here in Qatar and what did you find when you tested it in the desert yeah it was really interesting for us because you know um, some locals helped us to finding out really really interesting spots here in the desert where you have different kinds of soil you know like the really soft ones that you can find on dunes or more harder ones which you know have a, like a harder crust but also soft underneath and what we found is that the rover can gets a little bit hotter than we thought you know we were hoping that you know that it stays a bit cooler but even though he managed to stay well be uh, well be in the ranges where he can still operate on the moon later on it looks slightly complicated to me <laughs> how difficult is it to build a rover like this oh very i think so we've been working on this for eight years and we've not just of course building the rover but also the spacecraft alina as we call her to get it to the moon so um, that's really two very complicated pieces of technology. So and it contains a lot of electronics that you know um, that have to withstand the environment on the moon, like temperature changes of 300 degrees Celsius to I think it's uh, 100 plus plus 120 degrees to minus 180 radiation, which is much much stronger than on Earth. So it, it can be complicated. So with all these challenges that it's going to be facing on the mm -hmm. moon, how do you ensure that it's prepared? Yeah, so only to, as we in space always say, testing, testing, testing. So and that's what we, for example, went to come here. And what we've been here is not just done yet. So something that we're looking for is to find a very special site. And we found some good prospects here for what we call a full analog mission. So a full analog mission simulation. So a place where we can test out the entire mission for more than just, we've been spending two days in the desert, which was way too much for me already. <laughs> but the idea would be to spending almost like 11 days in the desert and really see of how all the components can be remotely controlled, not just by a team locally, but like maybe a team in Doha or even maybe in, from Berlin remotely, and then controlling parts. Okay, so you've spent all this time in the desert, as yeah. you're saying, you've tested, 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 yeah. and it's meant to go on to, uh, onto the moon next year, from what I understand. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you tell us about that process, how it works? Yeah, of course. Uh, so in simple terms, what you need is a rocket, you need a, a spacecraft to get to the moon, and then you need to land that. It sounds very easy, but um, the rocket part, Today is luckily a little bit easier because there are commercially rockets available. And what we did is um, we had to choose one rocket out of many. And in our case, what we've selected was um, an American rocket, which is a private one. And from there on, we've been sent to Earth orbit. From Earth orbit, we have Alina, which is our spacecraft, which gets us all the way circling, you know, making elliptic curves around Earth, traveling over to the moon, and then doing the landing there, which is the same spacecraft doing the same thing, not like with Apollo where people most of the time know that it had been different, you know, there had been like two modules, like the landing stage with Neil Armstrong aboard and like, you know, a service module getting it there. But it's just one spacecraft. All right, and uh, we're just showing uh, the rover. Just, just explain to us once again yeah, uh, how exactly it works and how it operates. And perhaps we can just see it uh, moving course. along. Yes, yeah, so what you can see here is that the rover can, you know, turn 360 degrees on the spot. That's one of its features. So normal space rovers that you have known and seen in the past, they have like six to eight wheels. But the special thing is that this rover only has four wheels and thus can make these rotations, which is really good for not getting stuck. Because even though, you know, it's an Audi, it's can, there is no uh, car service company coming to, you know, help you once you get stuck on the moon. It's 400,000 kilometers away. So what you're saying is that the four wheels actually really make a difference? In yeah, this of course, okay. a lot of difference. They are, it's much lighter because you don't have like six to eight, but um, also you have more maneuverability. That's something we tested also in the desert. So we tried, you know, to try climb up certain slopes. And there's some learnings that we did. Of course, tests always, you know, somehow work and some don't. And something that we've learned, for example, which we still have to figure out is that the rover kind of seems to climb certain slopes, which are complicated, better backwards than forwards. So we have some theory why this is, but something that we have to test out in the later on. Uh, 
and just finally tell us uh, mm -hmm. once more when it will actually be heading to the moon next of course next um, year is, the, is there a time period the earliest opportunity that we have is november 2017 november 2017 all right well i'm sure we'll all be watching out for it we thank you very much uh, robert for uh, joining us uh, and uh, explaining uh, to us about this uh, uh, rover thank you very much thank you